So you like my view? Beautiful. Tell me what you want. Nothing. Right now. I just want you to get your money's worth. Oh, I'm sure I will. Why don't you run a bath? Okay. I'll be waiting. Are you coming in? In a while. I just want to relax a bit. My fucking glasses in the car. Run down and get them. All right. Dumb bastards. Thought you really had me this time.
I have to be going. But you didn't even touch me. I had a wonderful time. You already paid me. A little something extra. You were great. I was? Yeah. I couldn't have done it without you. Come on, man. Pack up your shit and get out of here. Good morning to you, too. Great to see you. Good. Yeah. Sorry, man. Sorry. You can stay. It's right. Hey. Hey. Thank you. I'll pay you back someday, man. All right. You were right. It wasn't a heart attack. So then why do you still have that listed as cause of death? Oh, well, technically, he, uh, he did die of a heart attack. I mean, the thing stopped pumping, but uh, after you told me to check, I realized I'd seen almost no arterial rupturing or ventricle trauma, no cell damage. The heart just stopped. Also, uh, did you see his neck? Contusions to the lower jaw from upward force. Signs of trauma, just like you said there might be. The guy wore a glove. There was no prints. So I did a full toxicity battery on him. We found a small but lethal trace of what might be vinyl trifdoxine. Too small to be listed as a certain cause, in court anyway. Hold on, hold on. So you're saying the guy was poisoned, right? Yep, that's what I'm saying. But to you, anyway. We think we're onto somebody. A professional specializes in accidents.
Evening, Elvis. You know, I always hated that name. You liked it fine in the Cordillera. Well, I was a kid then. Yeah, well, we were all kids then. No, I don't think you were ever a kid. Did you come here to read? Yeah, we missed the point. I like what I see. Good work. I've got a new tune for you. No, no thanks. That was my last dance. I told you and the committee I'm taking a break. This is not for the committee. This is personal. It's for me. Well, I don't do non-committee work anymore. I arranged that for you, remember? Now, this person, she's a, uh, she's an old family friend. Family? As in yours or as in the mob? <laughs> I may have some questionable clients, but I certainly don't work for the mob. Well, she needs some help. Her father's an old friend of mine. And I'd like you to help her. Then you can take that nice, long vacation that you've been talking about. Hmm? I'll think about it. Hmm? Okay. Well. Hello? I'm a friend of Mr. Mayhew's. Take PCH North, about two miles past Point Doom, Nicholas Canyon. Make a left. Pull into the turnoff right there. I'll call you. Yes? Just go straight ahead down to the beach. I'll meet you in the parking lot. Okay. Take direction well. Thanks. Well, you know what I do. So let's discuss your situation. My, um, husband was killed last year in an auto accident. Only it wasn't an accident, Mr. Pike. He was murdered by his business partner. How do you know? Mr. Pike, my husband was a good man, but sometimes he did some slightly dishonest things. What sort of things? He cheated on the corporate taxes, borrowed money from certain accounts to pay bills on others. Well, everyone does that. So I'm told. You don't cheat, Mr. Pike? I don't lie. My husband's firm did business with the government. Buying equipment, military surplus, selling it to foreign governments, that sort of thing. There was this one deal, though, close to $20 million equipment. It was supposed to be delivered to a client in Latin America. And what happened? A substitute was made? That's right. Of some grossly inferior equipment. But the firm had already received payment, and they pocketed the difference. And let me guess. His partner found out. I had an idea that something was going on. But he never talked to me. But he did leave a letter in, in the safe deposit box of full confession. And besides, Mr. Mayhew said that you could help. What did Mr. Mayhew say? He said that there might be another way. My husband's partner is named Bishop. Here's his picture. There's one thing Mr. Mayhew didn't tell you. I don't get involved in family disputes. This is not a family dispute. It's personal. You want revenge, I don't blame you for that. I don't think I can help you. Good luck. Wait, Mr. Pike, please. I... It isn't just revenge. It's survival. Bishop has somebody following me. Well, that's not a crime. No, but this was. 
This car mysteriously lost its brakes and went off a cliff on PCH. What's the point? The point, Mr. Pike, is this is my car. This woman is... was my housekeeper. She was using it to go shopping that day. This man Bishop has everything he wants. Right, so why is he trying to kill me? Yeah. Because he knows that I know. of money, I'll pay it. I mean, whatever you want. Mr. Mayhew told me 100000 I'm willing to pay a lot more. This has nothing to do with money. Mr. Pike, please. Without your help, I'll end up just like my husband. I'll think about it. Yes. Got a question for you. Ah. Remember a guy in the Cordilleras, a guy named Bradford? He was an arrogant son of a bitch. Bradford? Yeah, I remember him. Why? I thought he was dead. That's my understanding. I think he pissed off one heffy too many. <laughs> You're sure about that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Why? Yeah, I thought I saw him. I guess it wasn't him. I'll talk to you later. Adios. Our guy got his poison. Maybe they can tell us who he is. How do you pronounce that drug again? Vinyl trifdoxine. Uh, you say it this time. Yeah. Okay. Vinyl trifdoxine. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that, that's the guy, all right. But, you know, his name wasn't any of those. It was um, Billings. I, I got it right here on a, on a receipt. Here, here we go. Dr. Billings Randall, MD, right there. I mean, I checked his state license and everything. He, he was legit. How did he pay? Cash? Of course. You didn't happen to see what kind of car he was driving. Hey, man, I mean, he only bought 50 milligrams of the stuff. He didn't exactly back his car up and he had to load it, you know? All right, if he comes back, give us a call while he's still here, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, I mean, who is this guy anyway? The Invisible Man. <laughs> It's about time you've called. Have you taken care of her? A little. How's the current invoice being handled? Slow and behind schedule, but we'll make up for it. Jordan Henning will not be a problem much longer. Yeah, we'll make up for it fast. I want her account closed out permanently. Are we clear? Understood. Julie, I'm going to the house.
if I've got this right, this guy has more aliases than a baseball team has assholes. Uh, these aren't just aliases. I mean, these are four completely different people. Four different sets of prints, four different records, including birth certificates. I mean, the works. So what are you saying? You've got four suspects for these so-called murders? Uh, no, sir. It's all the same guy. A killer who changes identities like a chameleon. What kind of person could do that? Given the level of sophistication, he's got to have been either the mob or the government. And maybe still is. I thought about it. I'm in. And? I'll contact you. Morning, Mr. Bishop. This is your wake-up call. Leave Miss Henning alone. Who the fuck is this? 
Well, this is your conscience. Leave the lady alone and I'll go away. Yeah, suppose I don't. Well, I was hoping you'd listen to reason. Uh, I think you're gonna listen to me, asswipe. First you're gonna be a good messenger boy and you're gonna hang up. And then you're gonna tell that bitch that no one messes with me and lives to brag about it. You got that loud and clear asshole? Yes, I do. The connection's fine. Anything else? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of a bad sport, so maybe after I'm done with her, I'll waste your ass, too. You know, I was never sure about you. About what? Whether it was you or not, but now I am. I'm just sorry we couldn't work things out. Goodbye, Colonel Bradford. I'll be seeing you. What the fuck are you talking about? Who the fuck is this? Mr. Pike, what are you doing here? I said I'd be in contact. Well, this isn't contact. This is breaking and entering. No, I'm not in the house. I'm only trespassing. So, uh, when does it... when does it happen? It already has. Really, it has? Mm-hmm. God, I can't believe it. Neither could he. I'm glad your work amuses you so much. On the contrary, I take my work very seriously. I'll go get your money. It's, uh, it's inside. Come in. All right. Nice house. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. And that they can be so gentle and so loving. And yet be so dangerous and destructive. You could kill me right now if you really wanted to. At first I was really disgusted by what you do. But then I realized the feeling in my stomach was just excitement. Do you 
think I'm strange? No. No, I don't. Doesn't your conscience ever get to you? I only kill people. Who deserve to die? In whose opinion? Go get your money. I don't want it. But you earned it. I would have killed him for free. See you again. You can't. I don't work for anyone more than once. I don't want to see you professionally. Registration for me, Bobby. Yeah, but you're not gonna like it. It's a rental. A rental? Yeah. I tapped into the rental company's computer. Guy who rented it paid cash, nice and anonymous. Driver's license said John Smith. All right, thanks, Bobby. I'll talk to you. Rabin's phone bill shows he called this guy almost every day during his trial. Peter Mayhew. Well, I'd expect him to call him. He was represented by Mayhew's law firm. Right. So what's your point? Out of our ten dead guys, Mayhew represented four of them. All ten of the dead guys were represented by the same three lawyers. All top guns, all rep, only rich clients. And all their clients were found innocent. Now, if you tell me that these three lawyers all work for the same law firm, then you might have something. Nope. But all three of them graduated the same class at Harvard. Okay. Okay. I say we surveil him. Maybe another one of his clients is about to have an accident. Office. Mr. Williams for Mr. Mayhew. Put me through. I'm sorry. He's out of the office for the afternoon. May I take a message? Yeah, you tell him I need to meet him under the stars tonight. Under the stars? He'll understand.
have a little problem. What kind of problem? What do you really know about Jordan Henning? That's what I told you. She's the daughter of an old friend of mine. Why? Do you know what her husband did? Yeah, he was an arms dealer. He dealt with government, you know. He, uh... he had a partner. Named Bishop. Yeah. We knew him as Colonel Bradford. He was here to testify for the Justice Department. Uh huh. And you nailed that son of a bitch. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> My gift to you, kid. My gift to you. <laughs> hey, what's your problem? Well, I think someone other than Jordan wanted him dead. Well, come on. <laughs> no, Whoever didn't. that is, wants her too. Uh oh. Well, then why don't we just uh, find out who that someone might be? What are you doing here? What are you so nervous about? Someone's still following me. I thought we took care of that. Yes, so did I. There's a guy with a leather jacket and sunglasses. Is that him? Yeah, he was the one I spotted before my housekeeper was killed. Do you know him? Not formally, I don't. He's been following you all morning. He's waiting outside for you right now. What should I do? Why don't you start by telling me the truth? What do you mean? About Bishop. I told you the truth about Bishop. Did you know your husband's partner was just about to testify before the Justice Department? Uh, how would I know that? Ooh. Bishop had a lot of connections. CIA, NSA, the mob. A lot of people worried about what he was going to say when he got on that stand. Maybe somebody sent you to see me with this sob story. So I'd take a job I wouldn't normally take. Bishop dies, case falls apart, and everybody's happy. And this guy with the leather jacket, maybe he's here just to protect you from someone like me. I'm telling the truth, I swear it. I'd like to believe you.
where I lived before I got married. Alone? Don't spend very much time here, don't you? Were you, um, were you ever married? No. no. <laughs> you don't sound too sure about that. Well, I was never married. I was engaged, but not married. <clears throat> I met her when I was in South America. Vacation? No, I was down there working for the government. Doing what? I killed people. for the NSA. I was part of a small group that was sent down to Columbia to infiltrate the drug cartels. What happened to your lover? She was my contact. She knew everyone. Set me up with the players so I could take them out. But when the government pulled us out, she was left there. Exposed, unprotected. I tried to get her out and went back, but I was... They killed her. Did you ever find out who killed her? There was this guy who was supposed to... have worked for our side. I had an idea it was him. He just disappeared. That I could do about it. But you never stopped looking for him, did you? Oh, I found him. Did what I had to do. Doesn't murder bother you? Yes, it bothers me very much. But you know what bothers me more? Lies. I'll never lie to you. I know that.
So what we've got now is a non-existent killer and a bunch of attorneys who are knocking off their own clients. You want to tell me why? Captain, these are the best paid criminal attorneys in the state. They have a reputation to uphold. Your client goes to jail, you lose your reputation. But the problem is, they know these guys are scum. They know they shouldn't be out on the street. So they figure, by knocking them off, justice is served and they can go home and sleep easy at night. Gonna need something better than this to convince a jury. All 10 of these guys had connections to a cocaine cartel from the southern part of Colombia in the Cordillera Mountains. I don't need a geography lesson. There was a guy in the Justice Department who was a liaison on the prosecution side. A guy named Peter Mayhew. No shit. That's not all, sir. You remember the guy that just got whacked? Witness in the federal case, Bishop? Yeah, but he wasn't one of Mayhew's clients, was he? No, sir. But they worked together a dozen years back in this drug thing. Okay. But remember, these guys are lawyers. Make sure you do everything by the book. You don't have to worry, sir. This is a priority. He nearly shot us both, and now you want to use me as bait? I don't think I can do this. You can't hide forever. But what if I screw it up? Then you'll be dead. Which is what you'll be anyway, unless I find out who this guy is. And if you find out who he is, are you, are you gonna kill him? I don't know. Point is, I'll find out who sent him. If it was Bishop. You think it was someone else? I don't know what I think right now. I'm really scared. Hey, nothing's gonna happen to you. No. He tries to stop me before the intersection. Don't worry, he won't. Just relax, drive normal. We'll do it at this light.
Excuse me. I know this is a loaded question, but what do you want? Uh, I'll just take a beer for now. You know, this drinking thing works better if you actually swallow. Thanks, I'll remember that. Hey, hold it right there, scumbag. Hey, check it out. Scumbag's packing. This is the guy who shot up my car. He almost killed me. That's why he's been watching me all night. The dead meat, pal. You fucked up, buddy. You should have taken me out when you had the chance, man. Now it's my turn. Wait a second, guys. Hold on. I'm a private investigator. I work for Jordan Henning. Before you do anything stupid, I gotta tell you, she knows who you are. She just go to the cops. She's gonna go to the cops. <laughs> she tell the cops. I don't think she's gonna go to the cops. I don't think you're gonna go to the cops. As a matter of fact, I don't think you're gonna go anywhere anymore. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Tommy, Tommy, man, back off. Let me take care of this, man. What are you doing? What's wrong? You tell me. Every time I kill someone for you, it gets more complicated than it should. What are you talking about? I killed a cop. 
Now, he must have uh, had something on you, right? What was it? He said you wanted to find out if he was working for Bishop. You didn't say you were going to kill him. Well, I did. Now, why don't you just, just tell me the truth? I swear I've told you nothing but the truth. I swear to God. I killed a cop, God damn it! <laughs> How was I supposed to know he was a cop? I didn't hire him. I swear Bishop, Bishop did. Bishop wouldn't hire a cop to kill you. Now tell me the truth. What do you think I'm lying to you? Let me ask you this. What is my motivation for lying to you? All this is about is survival. Mine. And if you don't care about that, then maybe I just better take care of it for the moment. Just say the word and this whole thing is over. No, you don't trust me. Well, go on then. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me. You've got it all figured out, don't you? What are you waiting for? Tell me you don't trust me. How screwed up would we be if we just eavesdropped on his phone conversations? Very. You heard what the captain said. Besides, the DA's office would die laughing if we asked for a phone tap order. So let's just forget about the request. Carpe diem. It's fine with me, but we'll never get inside his office today. I mean, maybe not. But how about his car? You got it. What the hell did you learn Latin? <laughs> some things to take care of. I'll talk to you later, okay? Be careful. Bye. friend of yours. I need to see you. Listen, today is shot. What about tonight? It'll have to do. Same place? Nine o'clock. I'll be there. See you. Bye.
message, I will call you. This is Jordan Henning. Please contact me. We need to talk immediately. You got me in a one hell of a mess. All right, what's wrong? I think she may have set me up. Where do you think that? You know those two dead cops? Yeah. Son of a bitch did the two guys from Midtown. Well, what makes you think she's behind it? Well, if it's not her, then the cops are on to me. Yeah. Well, that only leaves a committee. The committee doesn't know who the hell you are. Oh, come on, you're not serious. <laughs> it's bullshit. You think I would do that to you after all we've been through? Come on. It's her. She's the daughter of a, an old partner of mine. No. No, she came to me filled with remorse over the assassination of her husband. What assassination? Her husband. Was shot to death about a year ago. What are you talking about? He wasn't killed in a car rigged by Bradford? No, a bunch of pros stopped his car, blew him away with shotguns, three or four of them. Why the hell didn't you tell me this the other night? Because I thought you knew I... I thought she would tell you I... Oh, why would she want to set you up? Maybe she thought that you had something to do with her husband's death. You didn't, of course. Listen, how close to her are you? No, no, wait, wait, wait. Maybe it's the cops, the cops. Maybe the cops are on to me. Mm. And if it is the cops, maybe you could suggest a good defense attorney, preferably not a member of the committee, because I'd like to live if I win. Come on, that's uncalled for. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Associates and I happen to believe in the criminal justice system of this country. That's not self-righteous, that's principle. Something that I... I believe you used to profess to, some time ago. We're both self-serving. I'm just a little more honest about it than you are. We still have the right to choose whom we defend. Yeah. You also choose who to murder. We don't murder. You do. Think of it as the facilitation of retribution. Justice is served, so is society. Yeah. Thanks for the lecture, Professor. <laughs> so? Well, I suggest until I find out what she's up to that you suspend all committee activity. She might know a little more about us than she's letting on. Yeah, I think you're right. And, uh, listen. Just because she's the daughter of an old friend of mine, that doesn't mean shit. You watch your back. Son of a bitch. Facilitation of retribution, you hear that? Man, we called this one right on the money. You get an address on his car's plates? Yeah, somewhere in the marina. You know, it's a pity we don't have a warrant. I just happen to have an old one. Signed by a judge, never filled in the blanks. What do you say we pay our friend a visit? You got it. Ah, Mr. Hickok. Please join us. We're the good guys. The police. Hope you have a permit for the gun. Yes, I do. And, uh, you have a warrant? As a matter of fact. You know, you have excellent taste, Mr. Kenson. Thank you. It's called juxtaposing. It undercuts visual monotony. Is that right? Yeah. Is that what this is all about? Because if it is, I could have explained it without a court order. 
uh, we're more concerned with how you got the money to have such a nice place like this. You know, according to the IRS, you're retired, living on a government pension. That's right. Well, what'd you do in the government that they gave you so much money at such a young age? Why don't you ask the IRS? You know, we did. It's classified. Well, I guess I can't talk about it then, can I? Well, Mr. Wimmer, it wouldn't have something to do with uh, an undercover drug eradication operation down in the Cordillera region of Colombia, say, a dozen years back. I guess you can't answer that either, can you? Would you guys like to tell me what you're doing in my home? If you don't mind. Not at all. Looking for evidence. Did you find any? You find any? Doesn't look like it. Well, I don't give up hope. You never know. Then again, if you don't find any, you can always plant some, right? I'm sure you're good at that. Who's the babe? She came with the frame. Really? I thought maybe she might have been somebody new in town. A new client of your pal, Peter Mayhew. Oh, speaking of Mayhew's clients, we know you did Rabin in Brooklyn. And Bishop, too. And those two cops. We know who you are, Blaine. And why do you keep calling me by all those other names? I hope you realize Mayhew will break and when he falls, you fall with him. You ever hear of client confidentiality? Have you ever heard of a lawyer whose ethics come before his own ass? Well, I don't want to argue with you guys, and I don't want to get in your way, so I'll go outside and wait till you're finished, all right? Found any fingerprints? Just his. And one other set. Small hand. I think it was a woman. Okay, run them through. Maybe she can tell us something. Yeah. Is this line clean? What's wrong? Is she with you? No, she's not with me. That's only one of our problems now. The police know I work for you. <sighs> Jesus Christ. How'd you find out? Did she tell him? I don't know. What the hell's going on? I don't know. Got her. Well, listen, you just lie low. I'll take care of it, okay? Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. All right. Picture-perfect shape. In fact, they were very orderly, considerate of your property. Of course, we still had to go ahead and have our little search. Picture-perfect. Oh, no, 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 don't worry about your gun. I found it. We're all professionals here, right? I mean, I've been in this situation myself. How about if I, if I pay you triple whatever they're paying you in cash right now, we can work this out, right? I mean, I'd like to help you, but you know how it is. 
can't buy a reputation. Anyway, she's cuter than you are. She? About five seven. Long brown hair. Green eyes. That's the babe. Now, if you'll just move away from the window, we'll get this over with in about a second. <laughs> Sayonara, asshole. Ah! Dead now, Miss. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Hey, I told you I'd pay you back. <laughs> oh, hey, you want me to get you to a hospital? No. My health insurance just ran out. Yours too, huh? Yeah. Buy your buddies some dinner. Thanks. I have to pay you back again, man.
Carlos da Costa's widow. What a match for our friend. What do you say we pay the lady a visit and find out exactly what she's been up to lately? And maybe we'll find our guy there. Peter Mayhew. I'm not available right now. If you need to leave a message, wait for the beep. Peter. Elvis here. I just want to tell you that I... I know it was you that set the whole thing up. You and Bishop were partners in that $20 million Latin American deal. Until it went sour. You had to kill Jordan's husband. Then when she wanted revenge, you got a little greedy, didn't you? And you, you told her Bishop was one of the hitters. Smooth, buddy. Had me fooled. <laughs> but Jordan never knew you were the one who paid for the whole thing. Well, that's the way it goes, huh? I think I'm gonna be taking that long vacation now. If you don't mind, I'll be seeing you around, buddy.
man. We worked on at least four of these homicides, all unsolved. How did he know we'd come here? Well, he must have realized that we'd lift her prints from his place. So? Why'd he leave us all this stuff? Well, maybe the happy couple are having relationship difficulties, huh? Yeah. So where are they now? According to this, she has a house in Maui, a room at the plaza in New York, and a place up on Mulholland. Very dangerous letting you too close. Please, you have to calm down. I'm calm. You have to be in this line of work. Then again, I guess you know all about that. I found your little book. Put in your safe and I saw everything. You didn't know who killed your husband, so you, you kept hiring hitmen. <laughs> to kill another one. That's very... That's very good. But I don't understand the cop. I didn't know he was a crooked cop. Why did you hire him? I hired him to follow me. And stage that phony attempt so you would take the next job, which was him. I tried to call them off, I swear. Jordan. No, but I couldn't contact them once they came after you.
hell is going on here? George, call for an ambulance. Get some backup. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Thanks for the lead. One last question, though. What's your real name? I didn't hear that. Let's get me you. We got enough on him already. Yeah. Then what? Then it's back to the old boring homicides. Shine your head.